And then the last one there, uh, the cloud finops at Toyota is really around um, automation, AI, um, social engineering. Um, so, you know, just learning how people are are leveraging that, maybe getting new ideas uh, are things that I, I tend to look for. I often justify my attendance to the conference to my my VP by simply saying that all I need is one idea and I've paid for this entire trip for the next 10 years. I mean, it's there's always ideas flowing and I can take those ideas back in to our engineers and say, hey, companies like Toyota, Walmart, Pepsi are doing these things. Maybe you guys should consider that. Mike mentioned about what we are measuring, right? Uh, different KPIs, but and this is how we are scoring it. So the next thing is, First, you basically define the KPIs, then you have people start using the KPIs, and then how do you scale on the KPIs? The, the key thing is here is it's it's from the scoring perspective, it is more than the KPI. It's about culture, it's about the practice, it's about advancing FinOps. First big announcement we had was on um, our data latency. We reduced it by 30%, which is awesome. Um, we now have our uh, P99 latency, so 99% of our costs, um, which are coming in again uh, from when the services report the usage to when we monetize and when they show up within the console or our APIs or BigQuery exports, um, are now within uh, consistently within 24 hours. To be able to do stuff like anomaly detection and forecasting across all service providers in a single consistent way, kind of, you know, that will significantly simplify our estate and our lives as well. And that's one of the key reasons why we are very keen to kind of implement the focus model. And this is hopefully just a start of a long list of capabilities which can be built off the focus model. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, I'm J.R. Stormont. I'm Executive Director of the FinOps Foundation. And this is a sad moment. This is our last summit before August. Uh, sad because we're not going to see you all for a little bit unless you come Defend up sex in San Diego, uh, but exciting because everybody is really busy getting ready for this event. So uh, a couple quick announcements as people are streaming in. You are at the very, 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 very last chance to get a hotel room at San Diego. I think we have like three left on one night. So consider getting that ticket ASAP. And wanted to share uh, to the group as people are coming in. Tickets for uh, FinOpsX Barcelona just launched quietly last week uh, at our London Summit. We are expecting this one to close fairly early. It's a lot smaller, and it turns out a lot of people like Barcelona. So consider grabbing a ticket uh, quickly if you want to head to that. And with that, we're going to start the formal part of our program this morning as people are trickling in. So the fine print, uh, everybody loves. Uh, a couple things to remember here. Uh, this is a virtual open summit, so we do want you to participate. Please turn on your camera. This is about the community. The chat is open, unlike a webinar. Everybody can see what you say. Uh, so later, we're going to give you time to unmute and to come in, have conversations uh, and behind the scenes with us. Uh, but right now, just focus in the chat. Uh, this is an open forum, so don't share any confidential information. That's for the speakers. That's for people in the chat. And across the board, above all else, be kind, be inclusive, be respectful. And if you're a vendor, welcome. But remember, no sales pitches, just share knowledge not advertisements as we go through all of this. So this summit uh, is focused around a set of updates from the Google Next uh, event that happened uh, just a few weeks ago now uh, in Las Vegas. We're also gonna hear from a lot of other folks as part of this. Uh, and we, as the FinOps Foundation, are hosting this, welcoming all of you. Um, our focus is on advancing the people who manage the value of cloud. So we're a membership-based trade association. Uh, we're based here in the US. Uh, but we have participants uh, in pretty much every country in the world where there is cloud usage. Uh, there's over 16,000 uh, FinOps practitioners now as part of the FinOps Foundation, uh, a lot of massive organizations, some of the largest cloud spenders in the world, as well as a lot of small organizations figuring this out as they go. You're going to hear today from our governing board. Uh, you're going to hear today from our technical advisory council. You're going to hear today from the focus steering committee and a lot of the practitioners in the community. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, as I mentioned, about FinOps. Uh, X. We're going to talk about Google Next, and we also have some fantastic uh, pieces coming to you uh, from MasterCard, a uh, longtime community practitioner, uh, Vic, and his partner in crime, Mike, there. We're going to hear from uh, Virgin Media O2, just had a great session with them in London, 
Manet and Deb. Uh, and then we're also going to hear from a new member vendor, uh, Tango, we hear from Paolo there on their journey on taking full control of the cloud. Before we get into all this great content uh, and hear from uh, who wasn't on that slide, uh, Sarah McMullen from Google and all the announcements that happened at Google Next, I want to take a minute to pass to a couple folks who uh, also have been long, long time community members uh, in the community who are speaking at FinOps X to talk to them about what they're speaking about uh, and also to hear Amy and Lindbergh from kind of what sessions you're excited to see uh, there beyond your own. So Amy Lindbergh, welcome and tell us a little bit about what you're covering. Thanks, JR. Um, so Lindbergh and I will be uh, presenting a session this year at X um, around how we can apply the FinOps framework to SaaS. And uh, really, we're going to focus on uh, various categories of, of consumption-based SaaS products, um, just because they're, they're really becoming a lot more complex and a lot more common. And, you know, we feel like there's a, um, there's a lot of talk in, in this area and we feel like FinOps practitioners are getting more and more involved. And, you know, there are a lot of synergies into how we can deal with, um, with managing the, the, the costs around SaaS, especially for consumption-based SaaS. Um, so, you know, we're really hoping to highlight um, you know, what the, the two of us have done in our own organizations um, and, you know, maybe talk about how, you know, maybe the tools or, or what we're doing to, to help apply the same capabilities um, that we do to cloud today, also over to um, many of the SaaS products that we're managing. Uh, Lindbergh, you can jump in if you'd like. Uh, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the that opportunity to talk about how we can use the FinOps framework to manage not only the cloud spend, but also SaaS. And I think as more practitioners realize and they've optimized a lot of their cloud areas, they're kind of realizing, hey, managing rate and usage can be applied to SaaS. And it's actually exciting, or at least I, I'm very excited about it. I'm sure Amy's very excited about it, but there's there's definitely a lot of opportunities there. It's interesting to hear you talking about this, and I, I realize we didn't even do this on purpose, but there's there's a few sessions in today's summit talking about this idea of SaaS and other types of cloud coming in, and I think it's it's fitting really interesting along with this lines we're seeing where the the purview of FinOps is starting to expand because you know we see that so much the hard part of managing uh, FinOps is that really granular cloud data, and these other types of spend are starting to come in uh, looking for the same visibility and, and spend levels. So that's great to hear that. I'm, I'm glad you two are speaking on that topic. Um, I want to hear a little bit about some of the sessions that you're excited about and uh, and why as well. Amy, you want to kick off? Sure. Um, so a couple of these sessions, you know, I find really interesting that the very first one, the um, cross FinOps persona communication, I think this is really important. And, and this session looked interesting to me. I always like to hear how people are doing this. Um, obviously having, you know, a central source of, of truth for your data um, is super important, but then how are people handling, um, you know, how they're bringing that visibility to different personas? I know personally, I have, um, you know, very different uh, ways that I communicate and uh, show back data to our finance folks versus our engineers versus leadership. And while the source might be the same, I might be allocating it different. So I thought this was interesting. I always like to hear um, how people are are handling this internally. Um, the the second session there, um, I thought was also super interesting because I've been in a couple of different organizations where uh, we either had a centralized FinOps team or a distributed team. And I think um, the PepsiCo, uh, presentation talking about how they've built um, sort of a service that people can leverage uh, around that is is interesting because I've seen I've seen it work in in both ways um, either having it centralized or distributed and having like a centralized consulting um, idea is is super interesting to me so I think that's that's going to be a, a good session to to learn about how they do it um, and then the last one there. Uh, 
the cloud finapps at Toyota is really around um, automation, AI, um, social engineering. Um, so, you know, just learning how people are are leveraging that, maybe getting new ideas uh, are things that I, I tend to look for. I, I love that title as well. And I'm personally really excited to have Toyota there because a lot of the original concepts of, of FinOps really derived out of Kaizen, which was Toyota's continuous optimization, um, you know, implementations in their factories. That's really cool to see. Thanks, Amy. What about you, Lindbergh? Yeah, Amy, Amy's list is is awesome. It's, I'm actually, that those are similar as well. But um, for me to be a little different here, you know, looking at um, how uh, other organizations manage their Kubernetes and their chargeback, um, as more of our organization moves towards Kubernetes, that's that's posing to be uh, an interesting challenge. Um, so I'm lo looking forward to learning how other organizations do that. Um, the second one, um, if you can buy it, you can optimize it. That is such a great statement. I, I expect to see that on a t-shirt, um, but that, that's so true. You know, in terms of, um, I think one of the best opportunities to optimize really is the usage portion. I think a lot of teams already focus on um, on rate optimization, but once you do that, it's really like um, the best opportunities are gonna be in managing usage. And the way you do that is through workload management and, and things like that. So I'm looking forward to learn how other organizations are doing that. And then lastly, um, I think uh, as it relates to usage, right? We can automate a lot of things, but um, engineers um, need to be engaged um, and drive driven towards action. So, you know, I definitely want to see, you know, what can I learn from that? Um, I don't know if any, if there's any new participants in the conference, but I often justify my attendance to the conference to my, my VP by simply saying that all I need is one idea and I've paid for this entire trip for the next 10 years. I mean, it's, there's always ideas flowing and I can, take those ideas back in to our engineers and say, hey, um, companies like Toyota, Walmart, uh, Pepsi, um, you know, are doing these things. Maybe you guys should consider that. Um, and, you know, having those proof points really helps uh, drive engineers towards towards uh, action. It's amazing. Thank you both. And Lindbergh, I think you're the first person we've had done a seven presentation with the car. So for breaking the barriers there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've got a long line of speakers. Please check out check out the website. Uh, these are being still added more and more. There's going to be over 100 speakers, all new topics, all new areas, all types of companies. Um, keynotes are coming together really nicely as well. You're going to see themes across all the different personas of the FinOps framework. You're going to see big kid companies like American Express and AIG. You're going to see cool kid companies like Uber and Zoom. You're going to see, you know, focus on focus and all these different areas. These are kind of some of the emerging themes we're hearing people be very excited about, you know, how to implement focus. There's going to be a bunch of sessions from the clouds, from us, from uh, end user practitioners and how to, how to actually get your hands on focus. A lot of people talking about FinOps for AI. That's not AI for FinOps. It's a lot more talk about FinOps for AI on the other side of that. And then sustainability and carbon emission and, and tying that in is becoming a big theme as well in a lot of the conversations. So. This last week, uh, a bunch of us were in London for the member summit there. Um, and I see a few faces on here who are there as well. Uh, this was a, a really great event uh, with some amazing speakers and breakout sessions. It was about three quarters of a day. And, and one of the speakers really stood out um, and we wanted to actually invite them uh, as of last week. And, and Vinay and Deb, thank you for the last minute add to this. Uh, at the end of their talk, they get a great story about how they're looking to use focus uh, in their practice. Um, we're gonna come back to them in a minute. Uh, Got, got ahead of myself there. I got excited about the focus share. Uh, but first, I want to hear about uh, MasterCard. So big shout out to Vic Saluja and Mike Jaco. Uh, they've both been in the community for years. Uh, we've seen Vic's uh, journey and professional career as well, you know, go from multiple companies before he landed at MasterCard doing this practice. And it's really great to have MasterCard as part of a, a formal part of the foundation now as premier members. And I want to hear a bit about your practice, where you're going, how it ties in with all the various disciplines and sustainability. And yeah, welcome Welcome back to the, the FinOps Summit, Vic and Mike. 
Just wanted to give a brief overview of MasterCard. So um, MasterCard is a technology company. Not a lot of people think of a technology company when they think of MasterCard, but they don't uh, issue credit. We don't issue credit cards. We don't set interest rates, nothing like that. The banks are all the ones that do that. What we do is we enable um, the payments um, through our technology and through the, the, the rails that we have um, globally. And so this is just a, a very simple strategy that, that we follow. Grow, diversify, build, and, and a little bit more about what that means. Um, but really, the, the point of this is that technology underpins, you know, all of this. And, and what we build is, is what's powering all of this. And as a lot of companies are dealing with different data regulations um, ac across the world, it's becoming increasingly difficult to manage that. And for us, cloud is a way to help to solve that challenge. We'll always be in a hybrid um, environment, but the cloud will give us the greater flexibility to go into places where uh, we might not be able to go in today and especially based on those regulations, it's going to become more of a need. Um, so we started our FinOps journey just last year uh, in, in early 2023. And at that time at MasterCard, there were no cloud budgets, no way to view all cloud costs holistically. There were no governance, no standards. And um, we were growing, uh, we were spending, uh, we spent over $100 million last year and we were growing at over 30% per year. Um, so as that expense um, item grew, uh, a lot more eyes, um, you know, uh, came on that. And so our charter was to stand up a robust FinOps practice, but also to achieve uh, immediate savings. And so um, crawl and run at the same time, please. Like I'm sure a lot of, of people on here deal with. Um, so the first thing that we did, uh, and we can go to the next slide, um, we had to... Um, uh, uh, really define our North Star, what's our long-term vision, so that we knew that we aligned with other company objectives. Um, that was just a, a quick thing. The other thing uh, that we focused on real big is the culture change aspect. Um, so we knew that this would be a fight um, in, in a lot of ways. And the culture change, FinOps is so much of a culture change and, and, and uh, embedding it deeply into your daily practices, you know, than anything. And so we wanted to get executive buy-in plus engineering support at the same time. So we hit those in tandem. Uh, with the executives, it's, you know, providing the transparency that they needed, uh, that they weren't getting before. Also teasing with the opportunities that that were there and available in their areas. Um, for the engineers, it was able to give them, you know, that granular, actionable detail and stuff that they could actually use better than what they got today. And they could actually drive action off of it. And so with that, you know, there comes lots of challenges. Priorities and capacity are something that we all deal with, you know, do more with less. Um, as you're an engineering team or something like that, it's a it's another centralized group um, coming and asking to do something more on top of your your objectives. And so, how how we approached this was um, really going through just the path of least resistance. You know, leveraging relationships that we had in the company and some of those friendly players to start building those very um, initial set of wins. Um, and then instead of trying to show all the opportunities that weren't you know um, getting acted on or groups that weren't engaging, um, it was celebrating the wins and talking about how um, the good things that were happening in there and using that to peer pressure and kind of the feeling of being left out, um, you know, with executives. And so we took that approach more than the shaming, you know, way. So, um, um, but this is still an area that we do struggle, you know, you know, for, and we'd love to hear about what other companies do to solve um, some of that. It's, it's a constant battle that we all um, all uh, uh, face. Um, the next thing was the focusing on the real key partnerships and agreements. And so finance, you know, um, we are not part of our finance team, but they're a very close, you know, partner had to get them on board and, and, and um, behind us. And when we talk about agreements, one of the big agreements that we got is savings. The teams were able to uh, reinvest their savings and use it for what they um, needed it for. It could be whether it reinvest into something new. Um, it could be um, uh, solving a task that you hadn't solved for, you know, et cetera. So we got that agreement. And so as we were reaching out, um, it's we weren't taking your money. We are um, letting you use that. So we are just helping you. And it doesn't cost anything to, you know, to use us. Um, one of the other big areas was our cloud engineering team. And we partnered with them to uh, develop a cloud business office, um, getting a cloud community of excellence going um, to bring all the cloud engineers that were very disparate around the company kind of together on a regular basis. Um, you know, from there, you know, we moved into data, you know, and so, you know, getting all the data ingested into the system was the first big thing to provide that transparency. Um, 
like I said, we are over a hundred million dollars. We uh, hit 97% of that in three months, getting it all into the system um, and, and being able to provide that transparency um, first. Um, and then, you know, from there, we started looking at the, you know, what we measure, the different um, KPIs and stuff that we've established. And where we're at now is trying to generate, you know, actionable insights and set meaningful targets, you know, on that. And a challenge that we have is there's a lot of, um, there's limited industry benchmarks in these, um, as well as kind of the crawl versus walk versus run thing, you know, how that is. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Vic, who's going to talk to us about our M&A uh, challenges and how we address that, because 80% of our cloud spend was um, driven by uh, companies that we had acquired over the years. And so that brought an initial set of challenges. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Good, up, good morning, good afternoon, folks. So we'll just go real fast with this, definitely not reading the slides. So Mike already alluded to some of this in his, in his talk right now is the, it, since MasterCard is driven by M&As, right? 80% of that spend is M&As. So there, in addition to your existing challenges that you have for engineers to take action, we've got additional challenges with M&As, right? The integration is their top priorities. In addition to that, they align, they align to their own budgets. So we had to work with the finance teams. We had to work with their with the M and A teams in addition to our engineering teams to drive the actions that Mike is talking about. So on the right side, on the slide here, we just basically talk about what we did with our cadence. We had a biweekly cadence with them to start with, and now we have gone to monthly cadence in 2024 to get some actions and in partnership with our CBO team cloud business office team, we were able to drive the actions and get our uh, focus towards the FinOps culture. Uh, next slide, please. So Mike mentioned about what we are measuring, right? Uh, different KPIs, but, and this is how we are scoring it. So the next thing is, first you basically define the KPIs, then you have people start using the KPIs, and then how do you scale on the KPIs? The the key thing is here is it's it's, from the scoring perspective, it is more than the KPI. It's about culture, it's about the practice, it's about advancing FinOps. So this is the theme that we are currently utilizing, which from scoring perspective, the areas that we look for. Uh, and if somebody wants to talk about it more, they can always connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, it, and so from culture perspective, the goal here is that from in 2025, have the score and assign this as a company score. So once that happens, the top-down uh, buy-in also helps with tying it to people's actual day-to-day -day work. And there'll be a great boost to our actions that folks can take delivering the value we need from FinOps. Uh, so said that, I'll move into sustainability now. Uh, if the next slide. So just recently, what MasterCard did is, from cloud sustainability perspective, we do have a pretty strong on-prem sustainability uh, team and a chief sustainability officer at MasterCard is driving the net zero goals for 2020 for MasterCard. What we found out in 2023, late 2023, was that they didn't have any visibility in the cloud span. We basically were assigned targets as our, our goals as far as what we need to get from the data for cloud sustainability uh, metrics. And for doing that, we, we quickly went into our first thing was going into the vendor, native vendors, trying to understand what capabilities they have for sustainability. Following that, once we found out that we didn't need, we did it didn't meet some of the goals that we, we have laid out here, we went into C for CCF, Cloud Carbon Footprint, to understand what their capabilities are. And working with our community, working with different folks in the community, right, especially Mark, uh, as everybody knows, we determined that going in the evaluations of different vendors, that we need something that is more uh, transparent, something that can basically help us integrate with our existing tools, considering the timelines and the goals that we had to achieve last year. Next slide, please. And said that we partnered with uh, one of the vendors with Green Pixie. We have a talk at FinOps X that we'll be discussing in details about how did we go around doing our MVP with Green Pixie and what we've achieved so far 
with that MVP itself. But in addition to that, what we have done is we've also looked into how we can integrate sustainability with FinOps. And the drivers that we have reached or uh, looking into are primarily actionable items that we can drive from FinOps and sustainability both. Lastly, I will talk, talk about in the next slide is about convergence. Like I mentioned to you, we are pretty heavy in sustainability path and goals on the on-prem side. And from a stakeholder's perspective, we are looking at combined on-prem and cloud. So our convergence is a key initiative that's coming from our leadership at MasterCard and from product and program teams. Again, their goal is they don't care where they're hosting their platform or products in. They care about give me a single pane of glass for both cost and for carbon. So that's another goal that we're working towards and we can talk more about at FinOpsX. Thank you. Nick and Mike, thank you so much. And yeah, this is just a quick preview of the deeper talk they're gonna do in San Diego in about 55 days, no pressure, guys. Um, also want to give a shout out uh, to uh, Thomas Tyre uh, on their team. Um, Thomas is their SVP of technology strategy and transformation. Uh, and although he wasn't on the slide, he's actually joining the FinOps Foundation governing board as part of MasterCard joining uh, foundation. So excited to hear more from him at X as well. So now that uh, in the new world of the foundation, we're very excited about, we've got all the clouds involved. Uh, we're making efforts each and every year to go to each of the critical cloud conferences uh, and bring the community together, particularly with the product leaders from these clouds who are driving the features that all the practitioners, the vendors, the consultants, everybody uses downstream from them. So at Google Next in Vegas, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had one of these sessions where we brought a couple hundred people from the community throughout the day and a smaller group in to sit down, you'll see in these photos, with product leaders uh, and services leaders from Google to talk about uh, their offerings or questions and uh, how they are affected by the announcements. So many great conversations from that. We wanted to welcome back uh, Sarah McMullen. Uh, Sarah is a, a huge part of the Finance Foundation community. Google was the first cloud to join the Finance Foundation. She not only uh, does great, great uh, feature announcements and releases uh, for Google, she also sits on our Tech Advisory Council and the Focus Steering Committee, helping drive our standards and best practices. I wanted to welcome uh, Sarah to tell us uh, a bit about the announcements that came out at Google Next. Okay, so let's get in. I have 10 minutes. We'll go fast on uh, all the awesome stuff that we announced at uh, Google Cloud Next. And thanks, JR, for the intro. Uh, we've had a great partnership. So, um, And we had a lot of fun at this event. We've had, actually, we've seen a crazy amount of folks uh, using our tools, which has been awesome. Uh, we now have 40% uh, engagement up uh, from last year. And interestingly enough, I love this slide because it also highlights... Um, if folks aren't familiar, we launched uh, uh, our FinOps Hub last year, and the FinOps Hub has a, a unique feature uh, called the FinOps Score, which is a measure of how our customers are using Google Cloud tools and data to inform their FinOps practices. And the average uh, FinOps score is 2.4 out of 5. So it's kind of a neat uh, measure for folks just to see where they are uh, relative to the general community. And I think it's good because it means I think there's some room to improve, but it doesn't mean that necessarily like a lot of folks are um, uh, behind as well. So I, I think that's a, an interesting uh, figure for folks. Okay, next slide. Okay, so um, just so folks are familiar with our group, uh, we are building FinOps tooling uh, and our vision is pretty steadfast, which is we are building towards a future where all your costs are visible, 100% allocatable, your cloud is efficient, and obviously you have no surprise charges. Your spend is completely managed and predictable and boring. Next slide. So this is how we manage Google Cloud product at uh, for FinOps. So we actually are targeting the three primary jobs of the FinOps practitioner. And these are very familiar, I think. And we obviously build upon the um, uh, the foundation's framework here because it's an awesome one and, and it's very much targeted at the primary jobs. And so um, we have a, a myriad of announcements kind of that hits on these three primary pillars for us, inform, optimize, and operate. Next slide. Okay, so let's get into it. So first big announcement we had was on um, our data latency, we reduced it by 30%, which is awesome. Um, we now have our uh, P99 latency, so 99% of our costs, um, which are coming in, again, uh, from 
when the services report the usage to when we monetize and when they show up within the console or our APIs or BigQuery exports um, are now within uh, consistently within 24 hours. Now we obviously have a um, uh, couple of laggards that we're working with uh, very closely to get down as well, but um, this has been an exciting uh, progression for us. And um, we've definitely heard from our community that this has been appreciated. And for folks that aren't familiar with Google Cloud data, um, we actually stream net cost data. So we don't stream estimates and we don't do reconciliations at the end of the month. We just stream uh, net costs and now it's coming out faster. Next slide. And we also double down on increasing granularity of costs because of course you can optimize what you can't see. And so this comes um, for free out of our BigQuery export. Um, you can um, set it up and you get these granular costs. Uh, and um, we've now included support for cloud storage, memory store for Redis, and Bigtable. Next slide. And we obviously are a huge uh, partner with the, um, the foundation for open billing standards, and, and so much so that we've actually uh, put out a BigQuery view um, to support uh, V1, um, uh, the preview. And um, just so folks are that aren't as familiar with BigQuery, uh, these views if you already have BigQuery export enabled, the view just works on that data. Um, and uh, it, there's no additional costs for using, obviously, the view. So uh, this is uh, the view is according to the current 1.0 uh, preview standards. And check it out, because this is something that Rupa, if you guys are familiar with uh, Rupa on my team, has been championing and building out. And we'll, we'll continue to support as the standards evolve as well. And obviously, you know, we're uh, actively contributing to the standards and um, are very much keen on seeing this get rolled out uh, to bigger audiences. Next slide. I should also mention too, if you, those QR codes, you guys can sign up and go to the documentation as well. And I think, um, JR, you'll probably make this webinar uh, available for folks afterwards. So don't worry if you miss it. The other interesting small feature tuck in, but this one's kind of a neat one, is that we've now included the ability for folks to be able to generate their own BigQuery queries from our cost reports page. So customers have always um, asked, you know, these these reports are great. You know, I, I I can come up with my reports based on these various filters, but you know, how do I actually um, correlate that with my BigQuery uh, data? And you know, I'm not like a big expert in SQL. Can you help me out here? So this is just a nice little feature that um, you can now just quickly go from a cost report into your granular BigQuery data and, and, and play around with it and dig in even more. Next slide. All right, and so now we're, we kind of like rounded out in form, which is all around understanding your costs, getting into the granularity. We have faster data, more granular data. Now let's get into optimize. So on the optimization front, we introduced new uh, committed use discounts for uh, GCE resources, as well as new spend-based committed use discounts for additional products. So we'll, we'll continue to just increase the amount of discounts for additional products. So just keep an eye out within the committed use discount analysis console, because if you're not um, following some of these announcements, they'll show up there as well. So you'll be able to see within the commitment analysis uh, reporting Spend that's applicable for committed use discounts uh, that you may not even know. So it's an easy it's an easy optimization hack. Next slide. And we also have now included additional uh, metadata. So now you can uh, download your um, metadata that you've added to your CUDs in combination with now the subscription IDs that we've included in the BigQuery exports. So now you can see, for example. Um, uh, Joe's cut costs, and you can just go and, and filter by that within the data. So again, it's all about managing and, and being able to um, correlate the data that you're adding to the, the data, as well as uh, making sure that our data is granular enough so that way um, you can marry those sources together to get the insights that you're looking for. Um, next slide. Okay, and then on the, um, this one's a, a fun one as well. So what we've done is we've actually enhanced our uh, commitment analysis reporting. So our commitment analysis reporting is kind of one of our um, special features that we include where folks can um, dive into their usage uh, across any length of time and at an hourly granularity. And now what we've done is um, we've actually included and up-leveled it. So now you can, 
um, look across uh, uh, projects, regions, uh, even machine types. Um, and you can now switch between resources and dollars. Um, so now you can see, for example, how many E2 cores you're covering uh, with your flex cuts. So this is, again, like you'll see kind of uh, uh, our approach to optimization is, again, not having our practitioners try to find a needle in a haystack. You should be able to see your optimizations within seconds, and you'll see our reporting starting to uh, move towards that more and more. Um, to kind of take, again, the cognitive load out of understanding where it is to look, um, we're going to make it super easy for you to be able to understand that. Okay, next slide. And then don't worry, uh, we also haven't forgot about FinOps Hub. So we, GA we officially GA'd it. Uh, and uh, the way that we go to market often is we work very closely with our community uh, during previews. And one of the biggest things that we heard from customers is, hey, we want support for uh, project level optimizations. And so we've included that now with the GA. So there'll be more coming in this year uh, for FinOps Hub, so don't worry. But um, this one was a fun one just to uh, get out the door and, and make sure that it was more usable by the community. Next slide. Okay, and uh, sometimes we uh, like to save the best for last. And so uh, we are now uh, launching uh, within private preview our cost anomaly detection. So um, this is obviously built on kind of the Google gold standard AI. Um, we are now offering uh, anomaly detection for everybody at the uh, project level. And um, note that it does require uh, a minimum amount of spend. Uh, you need at least 30 days of spend plus $100 of spend over the last uh, six months. And um, the cool thing about anomaly detection that we have now is that it also comes with uh, out of the box uh, root cause analysis. So now you can go drill down into um, the top three contributing services. And within that service, you can see within the regions and within that region, the top three contributing SKUs. So again, the whole point of understanding anomalies is not to get bombarded with thousands of alerts, but it's actually to understand very succinctly how you can take action on the top three things. Um, and so that way we're trying to um, you know, empower the FinOps practitioner to take action. Uh, this one's going to be an exciting product. Look for more stuff in this one as we evolve it throughout the year. Um, and the, the feedback that we've got from customers already has been pretty cool on that one. So that's kind of where we're at uh, with Next. And then what's next after Next is FinOps X. And uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up for that too. And also you can see, uh, I was trying to think of a good caption. I think I put uh, JR on our interview where it's me between Sharon, who's my partner in crime on the engineering side and JR. We have a nice cozy interview and you can uh, hear more about these features online as well as read about them. And of course, like feel free to reach out to me or my team on um, uh, the Slack chat. We're always, uh, uh, you know, pretty keen on hearing feedback on these features and working with the community to evolve uh, our tooling to meet the FinOps practitioner's need. Awesome. So much packed in there in such a little amount of time. Um, Sarah, there were great comments and questions in the chat. Um, if you can stick around afterwards, I'm sure people would love to hear a bit more at the top of the hour. Um, oh, and I, I have one though for you. Are you going to, are you going to be announcing anything new at FinOps X? Not to put you on the spot. Oh, she's unmuted. Oh, that's that's the corporate communications god said, no, you can't speak anymore. OK, you'll have to see. That's it. Wait and see. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> Wait and see. All right. Looking forward to it. Great. So uh, a lot of you have heard and we've talked a lot about focus. A uh, quick reminder for those of you who uh, haven't been hearing about this for the last year. Uh, focus is a normalization schema to bring together both cloud cost and usage data, um, initially infrastructure as a service, looking at moving to SaaS costs, internal costs, other types of spend over time to make an easier language for FinOps across clouds and within companies. Uh, the Focus Steering Committee uh, is working in collaboration with a big set of maintainers who are doing the heavy lifting of building this spec and a big set of contributors over hundred around the world uh, heading toward a 1.0 GA release. Uh, at FinOps X, and hopefully with a lot of cloud announcements attached to that. Wanted to share a quick story um, from Vinay and Deb, who gave a fantastic presentation at the London Member Summit just last week, uh, time zones are killing me, uh, to talk about how they're thinking about using Focus. They've already started picking up the 0.5 concepts and looking forward to the 1.0. 
Vinay and Deb, welcome, and thank you for doing this on short notice. Thanks, Seattle. Oh, uh, morning and afternoon to people all around the world. Uh, I'm Vinay Pai. I head up the data architecture function in Virgin Media O2. Uh, our team manages the data platforms for Virgin Media O2 and the roadmap. Uh, we also build the solutions architecture, the engineering capabilities, as well as kind of implementing all the privacy and security controls uh, to align with our security team. I'm joined by Deb Ross, who is part of our wider team. Uh, Deb, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, thanks Vinay. I'm Deb Ross. Uh, I work alongside Vinay and the engineering development teams. My role is very much looking at reporting, finance, and being the champion for cultural change and cheering on any savings that they come through with. Thanks, Deb. We'll go to the next slide. A uh, little bit of introduction on Virgin Media Auto, I think. Many people in the UK would already know, but realize there's lots of people all around the world. So about three years ago, Virgin Media, which is the UK's kind of fastest uh, major broadband provider, has partnered up with O2, the UK's kind of favorite mobile network operator. And together, we are ready to supercharge the UK. So we are two of uh, UK's most kind of iconic brand, uh, you know, combining 46 million kind of broadband, mobile, phone, and home subscribers. Uh, go to the next slide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a little bit of uh, some of the work which we are doing. So last week, uh, there was a very good session for those of you who were around in London. We had the pleasure of presenting at the London FinOps Summit uh, on the work which we are doing in FinOps from a data management perspective. Uh, the session which we are covering today is a little bit more focused on focus. Uh, it's a condensed version of what we talked about in the previous session, uh, especially on the work around the focus billing specification. Uh, Deb, I will hand over to you to very quickly talk about some of the existing challenges which we have right now and why we are looking at focus. I think next slide. Thanks, Vinay. So very briefly, I think some of these will resonate with lots of people. Um, very large organization. Um, we're building, building the capability for a couple of years. Um, so we have reporting across many different teams, many, many different spreadsheets um, and lots of duplication. And I think I heard earlier in one of the talks, we had no central source of truth, which meant we had limited insight, budgeting, forecasting, and is, that is obviously critical at this point. Um, next section was around inefficiencies. Um, deliberately chose the, um, the, whether it's a pound or dollar, that's floating off into the ether and we're spending money where we shouldn't be. So I like to call them opportunities, but this area is around how do we work on identifying efficiencies, how do we send the, the cultural message to make the um, make the improvements? And then lastly, um, we uh, one of the things we we went last week is we use the hub and spoke model. Vinay and I actually sit in one of the spokes, so we very much focus on how can we keep working within our area, but also implement uh, the improvements across all the other teams working with the central hub. So this is the the central hub. So. Um, so with everything, with all the additional efforts and, and ways of working, they are unable to focus on the governance, the reporting and improvements. So in other words, we couldn't see the woods for the trees. Um, and before I hand back to Vinay, one of the challenges we have is two companies combined. So we have three cloud providers, but we actually have five sets of billing data. So huge amounts of data, many spreadsheets and an awful lot to manage. Um, so big challenges there. So hand back to Vinay as to why we are going down the route we are. Thanks, thanks Deb. If you move on to the next slide, please. Right, so uh, as Deb mentioned, kind of, uh, we have a large presence in almost all three uh, cloud service providers and integrating this billing data into a single data model via Focus, we believe is going to be a game changer for us now. Once you have all your data in one place in a consistent format, we can then kind of start layering many applications off the back of it. And our initial focus is going to be more on anomaly detection and forecasting. Um, Sarah from Google, I think you'll be very pleased to know that we have already set up the BQ views on top of our billing data. Um, and in fact, uh, there are two offerings right now from Google on anomaly detection. Uh, we are using one of the ones also from the professional services. So of, of course, there is a new one which was recently announced at the Las Vegas Google Next event. Uh, to be able to do stuff like anomaly detection and forecasting across all service providers in a single consistent way, kind of, you know, that will significantly simplify our estate and our lives as well. And that's one of the key reasons why we are very keen to kind of implement the focus model. And 
This is hopefully just a start of a long list of capabilities which can be built off the focus model. Uh, just some of the ideas which we have internally, which I would like to kind of share with the wider community here, because ideally if you could have a community hub where some of these things could be kind of brought together, that would be really good. So simple assets like, you know, reports and dashboards, you know, whether it is in Looker, Tableau, or any kind of BI tool which you fancy, right? If people can build those things, because the underlying kind of data model is same, so that could be a shared or reusable asset. Even stuff like reusable snippets or SQLs or things like that, which people can share, you could probably uh, create this community where all of these reusable assets are made available to share. And even KPIs, for example, there's the FinOps community itself has lots of good KPIs which are published and quite a lot of them could be exposed on the billing data and could be created as common snippets of SQL, which then makes it very easy for people to compare those KPIs across all your kind of you know, cloud service provider. Uh, Mike, uh, you know, from uh, MasterCard, he presented really well on some of the big list of kind of measures which they have, right? So imagine a scenario where, you know, most of your measures, those KPIs, if they can be implemented as standard SQLs, you can just plug and play them and plug into any kind of reporting tool of your choice. And then that makes your adoption of cloud so much easier as well. So that's one of the key reasons we are quite excited about Focus. Uh, I just... Uh, mentioning out earlier to JR that, you know, focus is pro probably one of the best things which has come out of the FinOps Foundation. And for those of you who have not yet played around with it, uh, please have a look into this and make sure you kind of built it into your roadmap. Uh, if I go back to the next slide, please. So this is uh, one of the things which we are kind of looking at as part of the uh, Google Professional Services, so uh, both anomaly detection and forecasting. So this is just a view of how some of the work will be done uh, in the anomaly detection. Uh, happy to kind of, you know, take any questions. Uh... Even though we're going to do uh, do questions at the at the end there. Um, quick uh, wrap up summary question for you. Um, so, you know, what do you think fast forward to once you've got this implementation in place? Um, you know, what do you think might change in your organization or company? What What should this hopefully enable with a clearer language for FinOps to be a focus? Simplification, visibility, um, and then the ability for the technical teams to focus on the improvements and continuing continue improvements. But I think it's the wider visibility um, through a central central source. Plus, I think the simplification kind of it will drive, you know, in the organization, especially for large enterprises which have a complex kind of setup. Having a standardized model for your billing data will enable a lot of kind of applications to be built in a consistent way. I think that itself will make cloud adoption so much easier. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I like to think that, uh, you know, focus should sort of help uh, foundation work itself out of one of the jobs of FinOps, uh, which is trying to explain to everyone the concepts over time and, and underlying all of these issues, higher level order issues about getting anomalies and getting spend optimization and getting business decisions always comes back to that data underlying a trust in the data. And then hopefully as well for the people, my hope is that it'll help all of you in this industry be able to have better, you know, talent portability, hire people who already know the language that you're using in FedOps and, and advance your careers as you move through the various companies. So thank you both for sharing your vision on uh, where you see this going and uh, looking forward to I, I think I think you're going to be at FinOps X Barcelona, but hopefully I'm, I'm still trying to see if we can get you to San Diego as well to continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Vinay. So um, with that, our Technical Advisory Council, uh, many of you have, have, have seen these folks and talked to them and 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 listened to them and, you know, uh, cried and high-fived over, over FinOps uh, concepts at, at events and online. Uh, they, they focus on how do we specify what needs to happen in the FinOps framework? What additional disciplines, clarifications, definitions need to happen? Uh, I want to share a couple quick updates uh, from this group uh, that just came out. Uh, a few working groups that have been going for a few months uh, recently got published, um, focused around cloud licensing specifically. Um, the idea being that we want to look across all the cloud-like things attached to infrastructure, see how those impact cost and business making decision making at the end. So there are three new uh, guides that are available, one for Microsoft licensing, one for Oracle licensing, and one for IBM cloud licensing uh, as well. So definitely check those out. Um, also wanted to call out in the chat, uh, Suha mentioned uh, a link to the insights 
recap of Google Next and interview with Wissar and Co. Uh, do check out that Insights property. It's our new journal that highlights trends in the industry, um, you know, different releases from the clouds, and then also weaves that back into the uh, vendor ecosystem. You know, in addition to what the clouds are providing, there's a lot of great platform companies and service companies uh, delivering critical features that help in your practice. So we've listed those alongside the Google announcements as well. Foundation is funded via two means primarily. One is membership uh, and the second is training. Uh, we run global events to support the community and really encourage both membership and training. Uh, if you want to support the foundation, please consider membership or training. Uh, it enables us to do all the things that we do. Um, and I wanted to highlight, uh, we do one new one every every time we do one of these uh, summits. One of our newest uh, premier members who has uh, joined the foundation, um, we've got uh, later, uh, CloudSaver just joined, They're gonna, we'll see them in the future, but we're going to hear today from uh, Tango, uh, whose CEO is based here uh, in San Diego as well. I'm hoping to connect with him uh, shortly, but we've got a few members uh, from Tango uh, joining us. Uh, one of them is Chris Ortballs, who's going to be joining uh, the governing board. Uh, this is the group that uh, drives the FinOps Foundation's investment and strategy into the various areas we need to go to. Do we do more community? Do we do more focus? Do we do more events? Do we do more standards? Uh, this group helps define that direction for us. So I wanted to pass to uh, Chris, who's joining the governing board, and then we're going to hear from Paolo on their view on cloud costs. Chris, welcome. Great. Thanks all. And thanks, JR. And thanks for the time and the introduction. So as mentioned, I'm Chris Orfalls and with Tango. So uh, I lead our product and engineering teams here. So that, you know, fits well in terms of it supports our cloud solutions that, you know, align well with the, the FinOps Foundation. And as you mentioned, uh, love being part of the foundation, being part of the new to the governing board as well. So, um, you know, we're happy to be here today and talk through basically some best practices. And it was interesting, the topics that came up earlier in the discussion, that I think fit well into this around the inform phase and basically looking you know, beyond public cloud. So with that, um, you know, I'm going to hand it over to Paolo. So Paolo leads our cloud product team here at Tango. And so he's going to walk us through uh, uh, the, the session. So Paolo. All right, thank you. Hope everybody hear, hears me just fine. Um, so one of the things that um, we've noticed here at Tango trying to implement essentially expense management across uh, technologies and most importantly, applying FinOps rules um, to different cloud services for ourselves and our customers, it's not just for customers, is we've learned very much and have been driving forward that FinOps is more than just infrastructure as a service. So basically we think about the entire umbrella and we're really noticing that the same practices and principles of visibility, where things are going, where, where are my costs actually coming from before I can begin thinking about right-sizing and optimizing um, are spanning beyond just um, what am I doing in AWS or what am I doing in my Azure spend? And when we were analyzing the market that's growing and how do we want to uh, support and see where costs are, are, are driving our costs are unknown coming from market growing in many different uh, sectors. And this is just a small sample of what we're currently analyzing right now beyond infrastructure. We've taken a large look at private cloud, uh, mainly by VMware. We're looking at SaaS that's spanning thousands of vendors. Every Everybody we know and we speak to and ourselves included are 150 plus vendors in the SaaS space. So there's a massive cost growth happening in this area, just as much as the infrastructure cost growth is happening. So now we know that there's this continuous need to visualize what am I spending and where, but now what we're saying is we need to look at where we're spending and where also by market, uh, by your, your CSPs, by your full SaaS spend. If you, do you have a co-location? Do you have private cloud? Are you wanting to dive deeper also into UCAS specific vendors? And I'll get into each one of these in a little bit. Uh, so next slide, I'll spend less time here. I think this is pretty practical. I've been looking at if this, how do we approach it? Uh, there's an optimization component layered in on, uh, next to an expense management component. We want to analyze as many CSPs and bring them together. Um, we heard a lot today about M&As being a major driver of cost growth. Well, with that, sometimes it doesn't just come growth in cost to manage, but also growth in different CSPs you're looking at. So now you're getting data from many areas. And we know that the importance of normalizing that data really pays into being able to actually do expense management, being able to actually look at all different categorizations of 
your inventory to your invoice to what your breakdown cost is so you can ultimately audit and optimize, ultimately pay what you're expecting. Uh, next slide, please. So if we dive into beyond infrastructure as a service, um, we really feel that when we look at SaaS, there's an ability and a requirement that is difficult to put together so many disparate vendors. You're not talking handling, you know, a few, you know, most organizations are using one to three players max, depending on your size, depending on uh, your strategy and growth. But on the SaaS world, suddenly it's, 100 plus vendors, some you're paying for, some you're not even paying for, but you're, you're uh, hitting your domain and you want to know what's going on and where. And we know this, that the challenges here uh, become more difficult because now you're trying to normalize a visibility under hundreds of different vendors. Do you have the vendor available? Does the vendor expose the data that we can bring, bring in? Can we centralize viewpoints of license uh, usability, my employees and who's using what, uh, at what level of usage are they even using it, different tiers of those licenses and trying to allocate costs by uh, that utilization and outwardly to departments. Same principles, however, suddenly it becomes a much larger area to manage. So under the SaaS side, this is an area we've been focusing heavily on trying to take those same principles and doing a walk run in can we at least connect and pull data? Great. Can we take that data, visualize it where it's uh, meaningful? Excellent. Can we now start looking into how can we potentially optimize and give the ability to say, I can't optimize until I actually go to uh, contract renewal, but do I have what I need in my back pocket to uh, make the correct decisions going forward, the right tier structures of licenses and the right um uh, allocation of pools of licenses to know that it's going to allow me for growth and not over over uh, allocate my my bucket pool or or um, not have enough to operate my growth for the year and I'm going to lose in my discounts. Uh, next slide, please. Now, private cloud is interesting because we feel that when you take a a, a strong look at your um, CSPs and how the meter data comes in and how you can visualize costs. And there's so many reports and data and BigQuery we learned today from Google Cloud that you can, but when we look at the cloud, we really feel that the best way to say you're, you have a lens on what you're spending is to go beyond just what you can pull from data from say VMware, where you can connect and say, this is, these are my containers, these are my pods, this is my utilization, this is where we are. Um, one of the things we noticed is internally, if we look at our different um, costs under this umbrella, we start to realize that there are different vendors that are associated to our private cloud environment. We have vendors for our network, vendors for our um, power consumption. If we look at just those two, we can pull in those invoices and say, all right, well, these costs are tied to this environment, are tied to this data center. When we look at the utilization from VMware of where this actual um, usage of our private cloud environment is happening, the projects that are associated, the locations these uh, projects are located in, we can then take and allocate out at a percentage level all of these different categorizations of costs. So it's a way of attacking the normalized data. How do we categorize it in a meaningful way? And how do these categorizations also work outwardly to different types of cloud spend, like SaaS, like infrastructure as a service? So in private cloud, we, we took those same principles and are really trying to showcase uh, in good visibility analytics, just this is what you're spending and where to grow. In unified communications, this is a, a bit more in niche level, but we've had the focus on saying, we know from a license capacity standpoint, what your Zoom and Teams are doing, what we're doing here at Tango to say, this is how much we're, we're seeing in utilization for licenses. However, what are our calls actually happening from where? What if I wanted to allocate out that cost by usage, by employee, by license tier, and by department and category and location? We want to take those principles here, and they work in UCAS as well. Uh, next slide, please. So kind of to, to wrap this up, we really feel at Tangle that when you take the FinOps Foundation's principles and guidelines and you create a cloud umbrella of SaaS infrastructure, UCAS, private cloud within it, and a growing outward set of vendors and uh, services, all of these principles 
are extremely valid. And until you look at this entire um, uh, ecosystem in one place, you don't really know what your cloud spend is, right? You're only focused hyper uh, on your CSP spend, but you can apply these same principles to SaaS. And with that, what are you going to gain beyond it? We're going to get a complete cloud management of stronger analytics. Without analytics, without seeing where things are going, you can't also communicate outwardly to your teams to bring them in together. You can't communicate upwards to your leadership to say, here's the decisions we're making and why. And then automation will ultimately come out of that. Uh, financial analysis allows us to really focus on generating automated general ledger files tied to usage data, whether it's infrastructure usage data, SaaS usage data, or license communicate. Uh, and now in private cloud, seeing that general ledger kind of GL file, look at costs from an area that fits your business specifically. And that is how we'll, we think that you can actually get more proactive and create more data-driven decisions because you're looking at an entire ecosystem rather than just one. So we, uh, JR, we will be at FinOpsX. We actually will be presenting um, a specific topic around data normalization, how we bring it together. So we really look forward to, this is our first time here. This is my first uh, summit actually, and listening to everybody has been incredible. So we're looking to share more and learn more, mostly actually from listening to all of you. So thanks for the time. Welcome, Paulo and Chris. It's uh, cool to see a different angle on, on this. Uh, it's almost like uh, FinOps has become where uh, technology, technology expense management you know, was before FinOps has picked that up for cloud. It's cool to see Tango integrating back into the cloud ecosystem as well. So we're at the end of the content. We're going to move into conversation. I wanted to give a big thank you to the FinOps Foundation staff. Um, all of your efforts in the community are supported by nearly 30 people around the world who work uh, for us uh, as part of the Linux Foundation. We all work for the Linux Foundation uh, to support uh, the efforts, the community, the training, the education, uh, all these areas. Um, I always like to give a special shout out on this one to Suha Shim, who is running the uh, summit program for us and for all the efforts to put this together. Uh, but it's a huge team effort everywhere. And thank you, staff, for being part of this journey uh, with us on this. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you during our next virtual summit. In the meantime, check out previous summits or the rest of our YouTube channel. We appreciate the support.